Welcome to Mediocre Gaming, and today we're playing Stranded Alien Dawn. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Zero. Let's get to it. So today we're continuing on our survival quest, but before we get to that, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to be notified of all future episodes as soon as they go live. So let's get into it. So when last we left off, we had a celebration of survival or a celebration of life, if you want to call it that, where all the survivors kind of gathered around the campfire and just talked. Uh, I kind of felt like it was it was optional. We could have uh, gone either way. I, you get the choice. I felt it was a good morale booster. And now we've got those birds that are uh, feeding off of each other. All right, so... As each new day dawns, you have new things that should be done or need to be done. Uh, the campfire can also be used as a cook fire just for quick, easy things. It can't be used for anything else. So there's a very limited menu as to what you can do, even as you progress, I believe. Uh, this is my first playthrough through the game, through survival mode, through any of the modes other than tutorials, so we're going through this together. All right, so I found out that scavenging, uh, the spaceship is really a good way to get some materials plus get a few bonus items uh, that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise, but it's kind of a one-time deal. So, just looking at these different things. So, the uh, raptors are actually uh, more passive. They're not aggressive creatures. These guys aren't aggressive. These giant caterpillars, they're not aggressive. But they will defend themselves with uh, some sort of corrosive material. I imagine that we might be able to find a use for it later on down the path. But if we're going to hunt them, we're definitely going to want long-range weapons. Which at this point, uh, not everyone does. We already had some trouble. When you're looking at your survivors um, there towards the top, you can see what they're doing in the bottom corner of their portrait. And then the top corner will let you know if someone has uh, a weapon and whether it's a melee weapon or a distance weapon. And right now we only have the one guy with a, a distance weapon, which was, uh, I believe it was scavenged. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a workbench and hopefully be able to make some weapons to arm, at least basic weapons to arm everyone, uh, so that if there is an attack, Everyone will be ready for it, even if not everyone's proficient at fighting. Uh, and possibly, as we go along, we'll be able to increase people's combat uh, knowledge and skill level so that they will become more proficient at it. So that the guy that I have that is the most proficient, who is also the healer, isn't going to be in danger every time that there is an attack. Alright, so... We've got, uh, speaking of attacks, we're definitely going to need some bandages. Um, anyone gets hurt, either uh, in an animal attack or something else that might happen, don't know. Uh, better just to be ready for it. And went ahead and said, hey, keep making them until there's two in stock and then stop. I think at this point two is probably good. We've got a research desk that we can put together. We'll go ahead and do that. And a cooking stove. A cooking stove, I'm hoping uh, we'll be able to have the opportunity to make some new recipes. These survivors, they're, they're a little finicky uh, eaters. They don't like eating emergency rations day in and day out. Even if it was their, well, even if it was their most favorite thing, I guess after eating it for, you know, a couple weeks, it would get kind of old. All right, so 
the the sleep thing is interesting but it's five days it's like max which means that it won't take longer than that but that's you know doing nothing else so I mean we definitely need some weapons um, but there you know there <laughs> there's so many so many things that you can do So like the we scavenge from this Starcraft. Uh, we can't do any more though until we research the uh, the right tech. All right, so the cooking stove is up and running. We've got a soup, still one of the quick recipes. Uh, we're not able to do anything more sophisticated. Uh, the more sophisticated stuff, of course is going to bring not just more uh, hunger relief but probably more uh, comfort and uh, improve morale so just like the celebration was probably a good morale boost uh, food can be a morale boost as well anything that brings a little bit of joy happiness comfort would probably be a good idea uh, now it's raining and it's a thunderstorm, so we've got lightning that we have to worry about. And, ooh, that was close. And if it hits uh, any of the stockpiles, it could destroy stuff that's in it or degrade it. So I guess I should have uh, researched the lightning rod first, but we can, we can uh, do that right now. We can rectify that. So if I had a second research table, I think I could have two people working on it at the same time. But I don't know, because there's really only one person that's really good, uh, proficient, at that kind of work. Uh, here's something. You can observe that. But it's also bleeding. I don't know if it's gonna stop bleeding on its own. I'm not sure the rules of the world here. If uh, you start bleeding, you're just gonna keep bleeding until you're until you bleed out, or if it'll automatically stop on its own. Sometimes, depending on how serious the injury. Yeah, I mean, certainly you could bleed out. All right, so get that lightning rod. And, like, <laughs> I just want to add everything. Research everything. I don't know about the emergency rations. Like, I, I seriously think that people are probably sick of emergency rations, but I think it probably lasts the longest. Uh, and then pickling, that would certainly be good, because that would, or should, extend the... A life of raw food and that'll be good especially going into the later seasons you know fall and winter so I don't know how hard you would have to try to fail to to fail quickly uh, or how quickly you would fail like the the only thing I can think of is you would have to like draft everyone, um, so there's a a mode where you can directly control people. It's mainly used for combat, but if you were trying to fail, <laughs> I imagine that you could. You just go look for uh, some aggressive animals and then have all your guys go over there and attack them uh, at the nest wherever their nest happens to be, and then, you know, watch what happens. Sometimes I think it's probably best to uh, observe these guys when they're sleeping. Yeah, the more you know. Knowledge is power. So, 
the more that we know about everything that's around us, the, the easier it'll be for, for us to, well, make more useful things. Now, one of the things I realized is I put the campfire too far out. So it, the uh, survivors were getting cold in the evening, which was disturbing their sleep. So um, using the pointer as kind of a laser marker, you can see up in the top left where, what the temperature is at any particular spot. So under the shelter, because the campfire was too far away, it was close to whatever it was outside. Because the, the shelter was only kind of a makeshift kind of deal, so it was not, it's not ideal and it's not closed in or anything like that, so it doesn't have a, a floor. So, all the things. Yeah, so right now we're still kind of in just survival mode. Get everything in place. Uh, you know, I've <laughs> and the top middle you can see what you have of you know everything. So at a quick glance you can see. Oh, I've got whatever. I've got a lot of scrap metal. What can I do with it? Or man, I really need some more sticks or wood. I need to go get some whatever the case is uh, certainly food is one of the important ones that you want to keep your eyes on because you never want to run out of food it's one of those essential things and then you have uh, weapons etc so food very important if you have a weapon that means it's in storage and not on a on a uh, survivor so I would say arm the survivors that are the best at combat first. Uh, that's my way of thinking anyway. That's my strategy. And then go to the guys that are not as good at it. But all of them will eventually have something. And there's my lightning rod. So uh, not going to have lightning hit, hit the uh, shelters and destroy any of the goods. Or, you know, uh, injure... The survivors. Alright. So we can put up this drying rack. So we can get some dried meats. Uh, but also. Uh, we can. Have hides dry out. So then we can create. Leather or. Get leather from it. I don't know. I don't know if we need to have a uh, a little tannery to make the leather or if that's a, a little nuance that we don't have to worry about all right so we've got a few things queued up the sleep thing i think is really it'll pay off in the long run because if they don't need as much sleep then they won't be sleeping as often throughout the day so they'll get an extra even if it's only one hour extra hour uh, per day that they can get to uh, do something else I think it would be worthwhile in other words I think it'll pay dividends way down the line the bench press I don't like I kind of think it's important but at the same time you know, we're, we're not. I don't think we're at that point. I don't think those survivors are at that point where they're uh, turning the corner from. Woo. Nice, another thunderstorm. So it was well worth it, uh, putting in the time for the lightning rod, which wasn't very long. I think it was three hours, and then of course building it, which was, uh, I think it was scrap metal. I'm not sure. All right, this is what I've been dreading. Luckily, we do have a weapon or two. Yeah, so just kind of look, <laughs> looking around to see, like, uh, who's who's the best at? 
Here we go. Like, none of them are great, but Layla and Talus are the best. So, combat means that... I think it means that you're less likely to miss while you're fighting. And every time that you miss is a missed opportunity to keep yourself from getting... Uh, you know, injured or worse. So at this point, there's animals nearby, aggressive animals, and you can go right to it, go to the notification, and it'll take you right there. And so you can see where they're at. And they're not attacking yet, but they will be attacking soon. So we have to be ready, and that's an awful lot. Like, I, I feel like the two weapons that we have are not going to be enough to uh, pull things in, in our favor. So this, <laughs> so this might go south real quick for the survivors. Um, the other two guys, they're not good at combat. They don't have weapons. They can defend themselves with whatever tools they have on them, but... You know, they're going to be at a severe disadvantage. Yeah, so just like keep keep looking around to see what what I can uh, have that'll help uh, either now or you know in the future, assuming that we all survive. Because fifteen, you know, fifteen animals versus four survivors doesn't seem like. Yeah, and there's plenty of things here that can be, and they're all categorized. Breakthroughs, resources, etc. Power. Power is a great thing, but there's a lot that you need. Oop, okay. Oh yeah, take them out. My raptor buddies. Like initially I was concerned that these guys were going to be uh, problems. And now I'm like, I'm glad I kept them around and didn't decide to get rid of them out of the area. So that's good. So it went down from 15. We're down to 6 uh, from 15. That evens the odds up a lot. So... I feel a lot better about our survival odds now. And apparently cannibalism is a common thing on the planet. Raptors were whoop, down to five. Raptors were eating off their own and now the giant bugs You know, one thing that isn't mentioned is water. Which, honestly, is probably a good thing, because having to try and get a source of water, uh, that'd be the end of you real quick. Because it would be, you know, get a source of water, get a source of food, set up your shelter, all big things. Oh, here we go. They're on the attack. I'm glad. All right, so now we uh, drafted these people. So we can control their actions. One's got a laser pistol, which has better range, and then the other one has a crossbow. Man, it took a long time to make that crossbow. A lot longer than I would have thought. All right, so let's try and get to where it'll make sense for us to uh, attack. There we go. 
Uh oh. Still got one more. Let's see if that was a good move or not. Miss, 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 move, <laughs> run away. And then just let them, yeah, there we go. And butcher all these insects. Uh, they'd eventually, you know, decompose out there, but we'll uh, hopefully put them to good use. So there we go. Survival of our first attack on the camp. So the... Uh, The logic is that, uh, you know, as you start getting bigger and making noise, it catches the interest of the animals, uh, especially the, you know, more aggressive animals, because they see it as a potential target. So we got these uh, squashes, melons, whatever they're called, and we can make a soup out of them. When we uh, get meat, we can make a, a soup. It'll make it a little bit safer to eat than eating it raw. Uh, just like when you're eating anything raw, there's a, a possibility of contagion. All right, so because Talus was the best one at healing, it took a little while for someone else to pick up the mantle and be like, oh, Talos isn't, Talos is the one injured. Like I said, Talos right now is the best at combat and the best healer, which is a bad combination. Oh, look, there's some stuff on there now. So I got some meat drying and then hide. So we'll be able to use uh, use the hide to make some uh, leather goods, and then the dried meat uh, will keep for much longer than just raw meat. Uh, because even if we cook the meat and make a, a meat soup, you know that will go bad eventually, and uh, you can't directly tell people, "Hey, you need to go eat that meat soup." It might go bad in another couple days if you don't. All right, so looking at the tailor, uh, just looking at it, looking at your your temperature tolerances uh, for each thing. Like you, your heat tolerance gets better, but your cold tolerance gets worse. So we'll need gear for summer and for winter so we'll eventually have to do that but i think at this point the thing i want to do is make a fence especially after the uh attack have the uh attackers attack uh on my terms instead of their own And using the scrap metal as a fence is the not most durable, but it's the uh, easiest one. It's the one that I can, I have, well, I don't have all the material I need, but I have most of the material and I'm able to enclose everything. Now, in order to make this not a you know, a uh, concentration camp, we'll have to make a, a gate or a door. The scrap metal fence obviously is not the most durable one. It's just kind of something thrown together because the, uh, the apocalypse is, is happening kind of thing. 
All right, so they'll get that started when they wake up. Uh, but in the meantime, we need to get another source of scrap metal. So that means going to one of the other... Man, this caterpillar is getting awfully close to the camp. I don't want it... Like, I don't think it'll come in and, like, attack. Because it said it was passive. But I also don't want it coming in and damaging anything. It looks like it's the size of a small elephant, maybe. So, don't want it rampaging through the camp. Uh, so I think this I can scavenge. And I should be able to get some scrap metal. So at least I can finish the uh, scrap metal fence. I have to clear it out. Like, I have so many berries in, in the stockpile right now, I'm not... I haven't told them to harvest any because there, <laughs> there have been so many and I can't really do a lot with them at the moment. Once I get to the point where I can make something with them, food-wise, um, then I think they'll start going through them faster. But until that point, not so much. All right, so now I've got fence uh, enough that I can put in the gate. So gates are good for two things. Gates are good for yeah, just tweaking some of the or looking at the numbers. For weapons. I think I only made two two weapons and we found one. So a laser and a crossbow and a short bow. So we've got a quite a few uh, we got a variety of weapons. And we certainly need to uh, improve the weapons, but we also need some melee weapons because uh, as we saw in the last attack, it doesn't take long before you get to the point where they start to uh, overwhelm. So what we need now uh, for this fence is a gate that'll help funnel any attackers in uh, a direction of my choosing. Additionally, if we start having uh, animals, uh, you know, tamed animals that we're going to use for, you know, fill in the blank, farming purposes, then we can certainly do that. Uh, so I definitely need maybe two gates and a door. So regardless of what direction they're going, we can... Uh, take care of that. But now <laughs> I realize that this fenced in area doesn't have any room for growth. So I'm actually going to make this bigger. I know it's like, okay, you, you just put on all that time to put the fence in and now, and that caterpillar just went right in. And now you're going to spend time breaking it down and then rebuilding it. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Because additionally, I want to start putting in some plants before it gets too far into the season. I don't know if that's really a thing or not. As far as I can tell, uh, plants will grow as long as the, the temperatures are there. So there we go. See that gives us some room to grow. 
I can put in some some fields and whatnot but first we have to take out all of these this whole line of fence and the gate so I think there's a way to do it all at once but I don't remember And I might have been able to just move it instead of breaking it down and and all that jazz, but it's what's done is done. They haven't even built that second gate yet, and I'm having them tear down the first one. And then I need to put in uh, another gate. And I think on the opposite side, I'll put a door. I mean, we can always put a door on the same side as, uh, as the gate. But uh, at this point, they're, they're having problems getting stuff done anyway, so... They got stuff just kind of like lying around, and I'm not sure if that's, yeah, let's put a door over here, It's what I wanted. It might be a, a major thoroughfare in the future, but right now, I don't feel like it is. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check us out on social media and thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you next time.